Ariel Hawani in Houston, Texas for UFC 192 alongside Rashad Evans who meets Ryan Bader this Saturday night live on pay-per-view and this is a sight for sore eyes my friend Rashad Evans back almost two years it's been since you fought and I see that smile on your face you walked in here you're happier than everyone else can you put us into your mind right now how does it feel to be 48 hours away from your return to the UFC uh, I'm just grateful you know I'm just I'm just happy and just um, just overjoyed you know just happy to you know be able to walk and, and, and be with the fighters as a fighter, you know, get a chance to fight in the octagon again. Uh, you know, one, one thing I learned in the last two years is that there's no guarantees in life. And, um, you know, having an opportunity to do this is, is an amazing opportunity. You find yourself saying like, man, I miss that, or I miss seeing this person. I miss being a part of this process. Yes, I, I find myself saying it a lot. You know, I miss, I definitely miss being part of the process. And it's still a lot new for me just because with the whole change and everything right. within the last two years. So uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, I'm kind of feeling like a rookie again. Do you like the new UFC or do you prefer the old UFC? I mean, I, I like some aspects of the, um, the old UFC, you know, uh, but the new UFC is not, not too bad so far, but I mean, I, just, I, like, I, I like that I knew everyone before, but now it's just kind of getting used to everyone again. It's funny because I feel like as you're climbing up, you're champion, this kind of stuff, it gets annoying, right? You're like, oh, I don't want to talk to the media. Now I feel like you're, yeah. you're happy to be here. I am happy to be here. You know, this is, this is all part of it, you know, and this is part of just really just embracing the, the what it is to, to be part of a, a fight show, a fight card, and, um, you know, the media is necessary. And... Uh, I enjoy it because it, it distracts me from, from everything I need to do on Saturday. You know, right now, um, there's a time and place to be thinking about the fight and sitting in my hotel room thinking about the fight is not what I should be doing, you know, two days out from the fight. Was there ever a point in this whole process that you really thought you'd never fight again? Yeah, there, there, was, there was a point where I definitely thought I wouldn't fight again. Um, you know, it, and it was, you know, in January after I had my, you know, second knee surgery and I'm, you know, trying to recover, trying to move around. I'm just like, man, I don't know if I got, if I have it in me emotionally to go through this whole thing all over again because I was out a year the first time and I'm like, I don't want to wait a whole another year to mm. to do this, you know, to and, and, and then to find out it may not have worked. So um, it was it was disheartening and, and it was something that I didn't know if I can get over. I thought maybe I should just find something else to do and I didn't know if my body would be able to hold up because the sport changes so fast, and if you know you're out a few months, there's already, you know, it's already changed. So I've been out two years, so I had a lot to overcome. You recently made a big switch. You went from Glenn Robinson as your manager to Sherry Spencer. Why'd you do that? Well, I mean, I, I just felt like you know, with uh, everything that's been going on with with the Black Zanes and stuff like that, you know, Glenn has his hands full with with so many other fighters, and Glenn, had, you know, he's he developed he has like 30 fighters that he has signed with him and stuff like that. So I just felt like uh, I, I needed a little bit more of a personal touch, and um, you know, I still work with Glenn and stuff like that, and, and we're still really good friends. But you know, I wanted to you know start to do um, stuff to develop outside of MMA and things like that, and I felt like Sherry was a perfect person for that because she, uh, you know, she has a really Really good vision for outside of the cage stuff and um, you know when where I'm at in my career uh, I feel like I'm, I need to finish off my career strong but at the same time start looking for what's going to be down the road for me and I felt she was a perfect manager for that. Are you leaving the Black Zillions? No I'm not leaving the Black Zillions you know they're my team um, you know I, I, I take great pride in, in helping start the team and um, you know I, I couldn't leave the team. Is Ryan Bader on your level as a fighter? I mean, I wouldn't say he's not on my level. I think everybody, you know, in my weight class is, you know, they, they definitely can compete. But at the same time, um, do I think he's on my level? Uh, you can be honest with us. Don't sugarcoat. All right, no, nah, he ain't on my level. Why? Why? I, I think I'm just better than him. And that's just the truth. Um, I didn't want to say it like that. I didn't want to sound cocky. But to be honest, that's just how I feel. And that's what I'm going to show on Saturday. Are you happy that John appears to be in the clear and... There's a road back to his uh, his return. I mean, it's there. It's open for him if he wants it. Yeah, I'm happy for him. You know, I I, I definitely didn't um, you know want to see him go out like that. You know, the fact that he's able to come back and uh, you know hopefully come back and do his thing. That that'd be great. You know, it'd be great for the division as well. But uh, you know, I'm just happy for him as a person that he's got some things you know together in his life and he can come out and compete.
Have you reached out to him since? No, I haven't reached out to him. You know, I feel like everybody, you know, they, they need their own time to go through their things. And, you know, you don't need a lot of people chirping. And, you know, sometimes it just takes you figuring out. You know, I'm sure we're going to have our time to talk. And when we do, you know, I'm sure to be memorable for both of us. Final question, and it's perhaps the most important one. How about them Buffalo Bills, huh? The Bills are doing their thing, man. You know, I, I got to watch them play against the Miami Dolphins, and it wasn't freezing, and it was uh, yes. a butt whooping they put down on them Dolphins. Perhaps a sign of things to come for you this weekend. Yes, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at it as a good, um, as a good omen that they went out there and did their thing. Well, again, so happy that you're back. Congratulations on just getting back to this point. This guy. I miss his interviews. He always put me on the spot. I didn't want to say that about Beta, but he made me do it. And Beta, we... I'm a... Hey! I'm going to whoop that ass. I'm going to whoop that ass. I'm going to whoop that ass. Look, he got red. He's nervous. Boy, he's nervous as hell. Nervous. Look at him. And then we got Tyrone Spung here with his 24-inch pythons just staring me down. I feel like he's going to break my neck. <laughs> He's like staring at me. It's a scary man. Yeah, he's scary. Imagine sparring with him. Hi, Tyrone. <laughs> Thank you, Rashad. Welcome back. Thank you.